Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is your personal psychedelic neuroscientist, Minesh Gurn, back at you with another video. In case you're new to the channel, I'm your tour guide into the complex and fascinating world of psychedelic research. Today's topic is psychedelic-induced mystical experiences. Real quick, before I jump in, I want to acknowledge that this video was generously sponsored by Psydelve. Psydelve is a platform for digital collectibles that lets users create their own custom trips and also gives access to a suite of utilities for people interested in psychedelics. To learn more about Psydelve, go check out Psydelve.com. All right, so first off, what do we mean by psychedelic mystical experiences? Well, a research paper from scientists at Johns Hopkins University defined them as those peculiar states of consciousness in which the individual discovers himself to be one continuous process with God, the universe, the ground of being, or whatever name they may use by cultural conditioning or personal preference for the ultimate and eternal reality. Pretty crazy to hear this kind of language in a scientific paper, hey? Well, in essence, mystical experiences are experiences of unity and connection with all things, often coinciding with a profound sense of joy and bliss. They evoke feelings of transcendence as though you've journeyed beyond the physical constraints of time and space and tuned into a sacred and intuitive understanding of the nature of the universe. Participants in the research studies often rate psychedelic-induced mystical experiences one of the most profound and meaningful experiences of their lives, similar to the birth of their first child or their wedding day. Pretty wild, if you ask me. And these days, the fact that psychedelics can induce such experiences is pretty common throughout the internet. And influential figures like Michael Pollan are often accredited with bringing conversations like these back into the limelight. In his book, How to Change Your Mind, Michael Pollan draws on scientific findings and argues that mystical experiences are pivotal for the therapeutic benefits of psychedelics. The idea he seemed to promote was that you need to have a profound mystical experience in order to get better after a trip. And there is some evidence for this, but I think it's been really overhyped with dangerous consequences. For example, some people in the research studies have become extremely disappointed when they didn't encounter these mystical states during their psychedelic experiences. It made them believe they somehow failed the treatment and now have no hope of getting better, which in turn actually leads them to deepen their existing depression. So this overhype really has real life consequences. So what does the research actually tell us about mystical experiences? Well, here are four reasons why psychedelic induced mystical experiences have been overhyped. First, it's important to understand that improvements in mental health from psychedelic therapy do not require having a mystical experience. There's actually no research paper published that says they're required and no researcher would ever say that either. In the studies, there are patients who get better without having a mystical experience and there are patients who have mystical experiences but don't get better in a lasting way. Mental health is complex and psychedelics are extremely complex. There are so many ways that psychedelics can affect your mental health. If you're interested in learning more about what these are, hit subscribe and stay tuned for more uploads to come. Second, even though several studies have found that on average, mystical experiences correlate with getting better, it's not a perfect correlation. Two studies using psilocybin for depression, for example, found correlations of about 0.4 between mystical experience scores and depression reduction. This is a medium-sized correlation and very far from a perfect one. What this means is that although mystical experiences on average contribute to mental health improvements, they by no means guarantee these improvements. Correlation does not equal causation, and again, mystical experiences are just one factor of many. Third, there have actually been two recent clinical trials using psilocybin, the compound in magic mushrooms, for depression that found no correlation, that is no statistically significant correlation, between mystical experiences and reduction of depression symptoms. And this really highlights the complexity of psychedelic therapy and emphasizes again that it's not a simple one-to-one -one relationship between mystical experiences and mental health improvement. Lastly, it's really important to remember that people's expectations play a huge role in shaping their experience with psychedelics. If someone hears a lot of stories about mystical experiences with psychedelics, they might start to see their own experiences in the same way. This is because those stories set a kind of template for what will happen. For example, the Mystical Experience Questionnaire, or MEQ, which is commonly used to measure these experiences, could very well bias people by leading them to describe their experience as mystical when it really wasn't. It can basically put words into people's mouth. All right, I know some of you may have mixed feelings about what I've talked about today, but I hope I've armed you with a healthy dose of skepticism against an excessive glamorization of mystical experiences in psychedelic therapy. If you want more non-BS, science-based videos about psychedelics, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, 
and ring the little notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Once again, it's been your psychedelic neuroscientist, Manesh Gurren here, and I'll see you all in the next one.